Okay. Um, I'd like to invite David Britton up to the stage now. He's our Child Protection Officer for the Irish Amateur Boxing Association to say a few words. Uh, well, I'd like to start by welcoming you all here today and say it's fantastic to see such a turnout, particularly considering the weather we've had for the past few days. I'm informed we have coaches from all corners of the country present here today, which I think speaks volumes for the level of commitment and dedication which exists amongst our members. It is this commitment and dedication which drives our sport and will continue to do so into the future. I would like to thank Vincent and Mark, our two development officers responsible for organising today's seminar, for asking me to speak here today. I would also like to thank everybody else who's been helping me in the background since the event has been announced. Hopefully today's seminar will be the first of many such events to come. Uh, before I get underway, there's just a few things I'd like to say. Because of the limited time available, I will not be fielding any questions. However, I will be staying for the duration of the event, so if anyone has any questions regarding the presentation or any other child protection or safeguarding queries, please feel free to come to speak with me throughout the day. I would, however, ask that everybody is conscious of the fact that this is an open environment where the discussion of sensitive information is not appropriate. So I'm just going to run through the running order of the presentation. So to start, I'll give you a brief introduction to my own background. Then I look at the latest information concerning Garda vetting and access in eye vetting, after which we'll look at how members can best use the website www.iaba.ie to access vetting. And then to finish, we'll look at some of the plans for 2016. Okay, so my name is David Britton and I'm the National Child Protection Officer. Here are my contact details, uh, web, uh, my email address and my phone number. Uh, I started in the role last July. Some of you I'll know, but for those of you who don't, I'll give you a brief run through my own background. Uh, I've been working in the field of child protection and safeguarding now for the last decade, primarily working with children in residential care homes for the HSC as well as several other private providers. I've also worked with numerous other community and volunteer projects, including guarded liaison projects, drug diversion projects, early school and other educational projects. I've been involved in the sport of boxing for a number of years with Saviour's Crystal Boxing Club in Waterford, firstly as a boxer, then as a coach, also as a committee member and as the club's child protection officer for a few years. So now we're going to look and we're going to move on to information regarding vetting. So to start with, we're going to look at which of our members need to be vetted. Current legislation states that any member of our clubs or organisation who are in a regulated positions or regulated activity are required to partake in the vetting process. So what is meant by the terms regulated positions or regulated activity? Basically, all members who are working with children and vulnerable persons on a regular basis must be vetted through the Irish Amateur Boxing Association via Ongarda Siakorni or the Axis NI systems. So clubs need to identify which of their volunteers and members are working with children and vulnerable people. And by children, we mean anyone under 18. By vulnerable people, we mean anyone with a disability, be it intellectual or physical. So anyone who's working with children and vulnerable persons on a regular basis, such as coaches, child protection officers and other volunteers, and then in turn make sure these individuals are vetted through the IABA via on Garda Siakorni or the Access NI systems. So now we're going to look at a few important changes uh, to a few recent and upcoming important changes to both the Garda vetting system and the Access NI system. Firstly, we'll start with the Garda vetting system. The biggest change to the Garda vetting system since its inception is the National Vetting Bureau Children's Vulnerable and Persons Act, which was signed into law by the President of Ireland on the 26th of December 2012. So this is where it becomes kind of confusing because it's been signed into law, but as yet there has been no commencement date, which basically means it's a law, but it's sitting on the shelf. As soon as this act commences, which according to the Garda Vetting Unit will be in the first six months of 2016, it will be illegal for any new volunteer or coach to work with children or vulnerable persons on a regular basis before successfully completing the vetting process. So once this act commences, it will be illegal for clubs to allow a new coach or volunteer to work with children on a regular basis before they have actually been vetted through the association. For anyone who wishes to read the National Vetting Bureau Children's and Vulnerable Persons Act, I've placed the document on the website www.iaba.ie, the link to which you can see up there. Okay. So now we're going to move on to the changes to the Access NI system. 
Much like the Garda vetting system, there has been some very big changes to the Access NI system with the enactment of the Justice Act 2015. Since the 2nd of November 2015, we have seen the introduction of single cert disclosure. This basically means Access NI will no longer be providing a copy of certificates for standard or enhanced checks to the designated signatory. Only the applicant will receive a copy. So, since the 2nd of November, the designated signatory, who is the person responsible for managing Access NI vetting for the association, will no longer be issued a copy of the applicant's disclosure form. So long story short, what does this mean? It means that the designated signatory, or when the designated signatory is made aware of a positive disclosure on an applicant's vetting form, the DS must in turn contact the same applicant and request to see the applicant's disclosure form before the application can be fully processed. For anyone who wishes to read the Justice Act 2015, I've placed a link to the Department of Justice website there. So that's it there for anyone who wishes to go through the Act. Now we're going to look at how to access the vetting system through the website www.iaba.ie. Here we see a screenshot of the opening menu of the website. If you scroll down the page, you can see it's about halfway down the page. You'll see the documents and grants section. Uh, if you click on this, you will be, have access to the Garda vetting system. So we'll click through. You'll see it there. So we can see here the grants and documents section. If you scroll down, you'll see the section pertaining to Garda vetting. You see the first part there, there's the link to the act we just discussed, the National Vetting Bureau, uh, Children's and Vulnerable Persons Act is the first link. Then you'll see just directly below that is the link to the new Garda vetting forms. If you click on these forms, uh, members can access them and then complete them. We've also placed a completed Garda vetting form and a step-by-step -step guide on how to correctly fill out the form, uh, which is basically designed to help any members while they're filling out their forms. So you have a step-by-step -step guide that'll run you through what you're doing, and you'll all, you also have a completed form which you can compare against your own form to make sure it has been filled in correctly. If I can draw your attention to the Access and I section, just below that, You'll see a link there. If you click on the link, you'll be transported into www.ulsterboxing.com, which is a very good website. You'll see on that link there, it has everything you need to access your online Access NI vetting forms, as well as your Access NI PIN notification and your ID verification forms as well.